As always, don't forget to check the video description down below for the best price on tools and parts I use in today's video. Today, we got this 2005 Nissan Altima with a four cylinder, and the complaint was it cranks and does not start. So I'm gonna just walk you through a quick walkthrough on what I did to diagnose this, how we figured it out. All right, let's check it out. Okay, so whenever I get one of these crank no starts, first thing I really like to check is I'll come over here to the little air tube, I'll move the air tube to the side, I'll take some starter fluid and a flat screwdriver, I'll push in, spray for three Mississippis, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. No more than that. This is really dangerous, guys, and you're going to always want a fire extinguisher when you're doing this because I have seen them catch on fire, I have seen an intake blow. Be very careful, okay? This is not recommended to do if you don't know what you're doing. But you're going to spray it in there. Then, after that, you're going to get in the car where it's safe. You're going to try and crank the car while pumping the gas, okay? If the car cranks, 90% of the time, it's a bad fuel pump. Okay, so we did that. Did not crank. Next thing, you're going to come over here. We're going to take this little cap off. I think it's like a 5 millimeter. You're going to take this off, set them off to the side and then you have these ignition coils. So, it's a 10 millimeter. I took this ignition coil off. I plugged it back in. I hooked in my little ignition tool. Okay guys, and this is your little ignition testing tool. What we'll do is I will plug this in here and then you would hold this on a ground, right? And then you'll have somebody start it up and if this flashes, what that tells me is this is getting signal. And we did that this did not flash okay and if you get the the real one you're actually gonna have a clip on the end that way it'll be a little bit easier um this one's just broken so video description down below you'll find a link for one of these now so we did that another thing you can do which is kind of these little fuel injector connectors down there are kind of hard to get to so i didn't do it but you can take a noid test light one of those will plug into the fuel injector connector again Try and start the car with that in. If it flashes, you know you are getting signal. If it does not, then you know you are not getting signal. So if you don't get signal on both of these, you know it's a crank sensor or cam sensor, and that's really common on these Nissans. So that's what happened, is we did not get the signal. So I was like, oh, let's go ahead and throw a crank and cam sensor in there. Fortunately, before I actually did the job, I asked the customer, hey, come on down here with your key, um, and then when I get done, I'll test it and he showed me his key was broken and there's a little it's called a transponder or a little chip inside of that key and it was missing so another thing you want to check you maybe hop in the car turn the key sometimes there's a light sometimes there's not um but turn the key if that that key light or security lights flashing you know hey it's not reading the transponder this one i actually saw the physical cavity in the key where the transponder was missing so anyways, those are three common issues, uh, fuel pump, crank sensor, cam sensor, or key. Um, a lot of times will cause this crank and no start. A uh, less common thing that can happen is the computer can be bad, uh, but that's not as common um, for, I think, the Nissan Versa. That's kind of common, but anyways, you can do all those tests and kind of pinpoint before you start replacing parts. So anyways, that'll conclude today's project. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Two more things, the transponder, if you have the transponder key issue, bad transponder or missing transponder, what are your options, what can you do? Okay, one, you can take it to the dealership, have them put a new key, reprogram it and cut it, or you could have a locksmith, like look up key lockout guy in your local area and they may be able to cut your new key and program it. That's what I did for my customer, I just referred them to my local key guy and you know, Google will probably have like a list of guys. You can try calling them and then come out there and cut you a key and reprogram it. In our case, I think this guy was charging $120 plus tax to do the key thing. Second thing, I didn't mention spark plugs. If you do get a spark signal off of that ignition coil and it's still no start, you might just want to pull one spark plug out and look at it because you could have really terrible spark plugs that are causing the car not to start. If that's the situation, a lot of times leading up to it, you'll have skips and stuff, and then eventually one day it just won't start. But if you have no skips leading up to it, that's less likely. The other thing um, is check a few, if not all, 
of your ignition coils because one of them could be bad and then the other ones may be good and again one bad ignition coil would cause like a skip kind of situation probably not a no start um, that's another rare thing if all four of your ignition coils went bad that could cause a no start but that's less likely and you'd have a lot of skipping leading up to the no start so if there's no skipping leading up to the no start those are less likely causes it'd be those first three i was talking about anyways that's it thanks for watching see you next time